Welcome back everybody. So this is just going to be a quick one. Uh, so I received the BL Touch and I've wired up to the board here. Now you see, the BL Touch comes with a very short cable, so you can see how I've made up my own longer cable that's going into the back of the printer there. You just about to see the BL Touch under there. Sorry if this is shaky. So we wire it up to the servo here. If this wants to focus, would be nice. And you can see we've got the three pins, which is the ground, the five volts, and the signal. And then the other end of the BL touch is wired up to the Z end stop. Which I pulled through to the back of the printer. So we didn't have to move that connector at all. And once it's hooked up, we need to modify the firmware, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay guys, so let's get on to installing the firmware. So the first thing we need to do is install the Arduino IDE and we need to install the Marlin firmware or download it. So what we need to do is if we just go into Google and type in Arduino IDE, you'll find the first link is the Arduino software and just make sure that you download the version compatible to your operating system. So I've already done this and I'm sure you guys know how to install a um, piece of software so just download the Windows installer and get that done. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to Google again and type in the Marlin firmware and we'll find that on the GitHub page we've got a couple of different versions and we need to make sure we get the latest version so by default it's set to RC we want the RC bug fix as there are a couple of issues with Marlin and the BL Touch and they're being fixed in the RC bug fix rather than the main RC client. So if you click RC bug fix and then you want to click clone or download and download the zip and extract that to somewhere that you can find it which I've done on my desktop here. Once you've extracted the folder we want to go into it and you'll find a Marlin folder here. Go into that and as long as you've installed the Arduino IDE, you'll find the marlin.ino file. If you double click that, that will open it up in the IDE. Right, so you'll see at the top here, we've got all these tabs. We want to go to the configuration.h file. And the first thing we will do is install the library for our LCD display. So to do that, what we do is go to sketch, include library, manage libraries and after it's done its update down here you want to type in the top search u8 glib and you'll see the u8 glib down the bottom here you want to select your version as 1.18.0 and click install i've already done this so it's grayed out once that's done click close and then go to sketch again include library and down the bottom here you'll see U8 GLIB and you'll see it includes that at the top here. The next step is we want to set which board we're using so if you scroll down to line I think it's line 135 you'll find motherboard here we go and at the moment it's set to ramps but there is actually a specific config for our board and this tells the, uh, the firmware which pins to use. So we changed that to motherboard space board underscore same slot underscore two in one. And then we need to scroll down again. And once what we'll find is the thermal settings. And we need to tell the firmware that we actually have a thermistor on our beds because we do use heated beds. So we've got temperature sensor zero, which is our hot end thermo thermistor, and we want to set our temperature sensor bed to one to tell it we have one there as well. Next, we scroll down again until we find the defined end stops. And because we're using mechanical end stops, not optical end stops, we need to invert the X and the Y end stops. So to do that, you just set false to true. Once again, we scroll down and 
we'll find these three lines that we have to change here. So these are the steps per unit. Um, most of you probably already know how to change your E steps, but we need to do this for all of our motors. Uh, I'm using the default motors that came with the Wanhao i3 version 2. So the X axis is 80, that's correct. Y axis is 80, that's also correct. The Z axis, if you set, leave it at 4000, your printer will scream when the Z axis moves. I found this out the hard way. So we want to reduce that from 4000 to 400. And the extruder motor is our E steps, as most of you will have calibrated. So you can either put your default E steps, which on the board is 96. Um, if you've calibrated your E-steps, you want to put that value here. So my E-steps came out to 98. Yours may be different. Next, we need to change our default max feed rate. So we can actually up these a bit. So these could be 500, 500, 20, and 50. And then our max acceleration we need to turn down. So that'll be 1,000. 800, 100, 10,000. Those values should work fine. And once again, we need to scroll down to our jerk. Now, you've probably set your jerk before, but I'm going to set these two just a lower value just to be safe. So that's going to be 10 on the X, 10 on the Y, 3 on the Z, and 5 for the E. Now, we're going to scroll down again and we want to define our BL touch. So you'll find this line here, define BL touch. We need to uncomment that. And then once we scroll down again, we need to set our offsets. Now, if you're using the Thingiverse link to the BL touch adapter for our printer, we need to change the offset on the Y to be 20. As we're about 10 millimeters off the X, we're 20 millimeters off the Y, and we don't need to change the Z at all. Next thing we also need to do is decrease the XY probe speed to 4000. And once again, scroll down to find the next value. And you'll find Z clearance deploy probe, which is set to 10. We want to up that to 15, and clearance between probes is to 10. This is just to reduce the BL touch from erroring out as much as it does on the current version of Marlin. Once again, we need to scroll down. And we'll find the auto bed leveling. Now what we need to do is uncomment the middle option, which is auto bed leveling linear. This gives us nine point, a nine point probe in a three by three grid. Now if we scroll down again, we need to change our positions so that the probe doesn't go over the edge. So we'd set our left to 10, our right to 185, our front to 20, and our back to 155. And this is just that when it's probing, it doesn't go over the edge of our bed at all. And we also need to do the same just for our uh, ALB probe here. Change that from 180 to 160. Once again, if we scroll down and find our next settings. Now, under additional features, we have EEP ROM, and we want to define that and comment it. That's because um, every single mount for the BL Touch is different, everybody's bearings are different, and you will get a different offset value, um, which you will have to modify in order to get the BL Touch working properly with your printer. Uh, I will explain how to do that in another video. Once again, if we scroll down, we need to find our next set of settings. The next set is going to be for the LCD and SD support. So we need to scroll down to LCD type and uncomment the DOG LCD, which is the full graphics display. That's the LCD that I've ordered. Once again, we need to go down and we need to find, where is it here? Sorry, no. Nope stay up there we've got SD card support which we need to uncomment so that our SD card slot works now we can scroll down and this is optional but most I think most of you will do it when you do the Marlin firmware for the first time the encoder wheel is not in the same direction as the original one out um, so I have uncommented this to reverse it um, it drove me nuts the next thing we can do 
is individual access homing menu. I prefer to have this, but some of you may not. So once again, this is optional. So we can just uncomment that. The next setting is we need to tell it which display we're using. So we're using the RepRat Discount Full Graphics Smart Controller. If your LCD is different, just make sure you find out which one you need to uncomment for that. And then we've got one last thing that we need to change, which is to enable servo support, which is right down the bottom here. And you've got define number of servos three, just uncomment that, and that tells it that we're using a servo. So once you've done all this, what you want to do is you want to connect the USB cable to the same smart board. Once you've done that, you'll see the LCD comes on, but it's blank. That's completely normal. First thing we're going to do is just verify. Now, the verify takes between 5 to 15 minutes. So once that's done, we will go to the next step. Okay, so the compiling is completed. You'll see that it says done completing compiling down there and gives you some information about how much memory we've used on our device. The next thing we want to do is just go to tools, make sure your board is set to the Arduino Mega or Mega 2560 and that your processor is set to the AT Mega 2560. Once that's done, we just need to hit the upload button here and this will compile it again, although much quicker, and then upload it to your board. And once that happens, it should reboot and you'll see that you have a screen and a fully working printer, uh, which you will probably have to calibrate. Um, if you have any questions, of course, ask in the comments or in Facebook, in the group, and I'll try and answer them as best I can. And um, if you have any issues, then obviously you can ask as well.